Hello one and all and welcome to a new Let's Play of No Man's Sky, a game that's just been released on PC, it's been out for a few days on PS4. What is No Man's Sky? It is a procedurally generated universe. Uh, the goal, quote unquote, is to get to the centre of the universe I believe. Thank you, computer. As I was saying, uh, this is a procedurally generated universe explorer. Technically, it has a goal, but really, it's about the exploration. It's about going to these procedurally generated worlds with their bizarre environments and just exploring, seeing what you can see, gradually progressing. Uh, so, you can see we've spawned on Guhianensa Sard Sunday, a fantastically named planet. Uh, let's go ahead and, if we can, rename that. Here we are. We can rename and upload. Eki is landing. So that is how you can make money in the game, basically. You discover things, you upload them to the Global Atlas. And, uh, well, we'll upload that later. Um, you receive uh, universal credits for discovering things and uploading information to the Atlas. So it really encourages the exploration and then you use those credits at uh, NPC traders that you encounter later in the game. It's a bit... If you think of, like, Elite Dangerous maybe crossed with something like Spore, but without all the penis monsters. And that's kind of the feel I'm getting from the game. I did play through a little bit. I must say at the start, it took me a, a little bit of fiddling to get this to run on PC. Um, first of all, I got a total black screen on start. What I had to do to fix that was, a, like by default, the game launches into full screen mode. I had to switch it to borderless windowed mode, and that's what I'm now playing in. Secondly, I had an absolutely horrendous frame rate, um, which apparently was to do with the frame rate being capped at 30. I've set the frame rate to max, which is, uh, I believe, 160. And now we are more or less completely smooth. There's a little bit of hitching. Uh, it's a game with fairly high system requirements. Um, it does look amazing, though, doesn't it? But yeah, it's running pretty smooth now. It took me about an hour of fiddling to get it to this point, but it's nothing too technical. You've just got to edit some files um, and basically know what you're looking for. Um, not really acceptable. I mean, th th these games, they should work out of the box, but, you know, at least it's fixable. So, uh, what are we doing here on this planet, first of all? Well, we've spawned next to our completely wrecked starship, and mission number one is to fix this. And if we hop inside, it'll tell us how. So you see, the launch thruster is critically damaged. And to repair it, we are going to need to make three more of these. Karite sheets. Which we make out of iron. We need to go out and find at least 150 iron. So let's hop out of the ship. and repair our launch thrusters and all of this apparently is procedurally generated which really is quite spectacular
So there we go. I'm going to take all that carbon. And the first thing I'm actually going to do is go into my inventory. Uh, switch to my multi-tool, which is my combination um, mining laser slash handgun slash all kinds of things. It's a multiple tool, you know. Uh, and we're going to repair the scanner. And now if I press the left stick, boo, I send a shockwave across the planet. And that shows me where things are that I can get, like this big plutonium rocks here. Gonna grab those straight away. And this should be, yeah, Thormium 9, which I also need a bit of. I'm cheating a little bit, because as I said, I did play for a, about 45 minutes, uh, and brilliantly for the actual footage of the game, just record the sound. So I'm going through it again. I don't mind, honestly. Uh, oh, we got a increased damage for the photon cannon. If we can find 100 Omegon, 50 gold, 50 zinc, which we can find on this planet if we can, if we're lucky. And we've got a Gek charm, which I believe is a tradable item. I didn't get that far in the game. Anything else around here that we haven't opened yet? No. Okay, so we need to find small rocks. Now you'll notice that in the bottom left of the screen there is a green bar, which is slowly decreasing. That represents city level. Uh, different planets have different hazardous conditions. There's radiation, there's toxicity. Uh, I believe, although I haven't encountered it yet, there is... There is like extreme weather conditions. So I'm going to mine out that rock. I'm going to get myself 66 iron. We're going to go over here. That's a lot of stuff. Oh, and there's a I, that is a knowledge stone which will teach us how to speak alien languages. Oh look, a uh, cargo drop. Fascination bead. Health restore we don't need yet. A knowledge stone. So I'm gonna interact with this. And I've learned the Viking word for interloper. And I'm going to be mining plants as I go, because I discovered you can use carbon, among other things, to actually refuel the mining laser. Can I get this? Plutonium? Yes, I can. Just a little bit of plutonium. When you point your mining laser at things, it will tell you if you can interact with them in any way. Oh god, we've alerted Sentinel drones. Already. Fuck. Okay, we've... So these things are basically the uh, planetary defenders. And they will... Basically, if we get too active in looting the planet, we will get... Uh, drones spawning on us. Okay, great. So we've defeated that wave of them. Oh look, uh, the, we've discovered a bolt, cla bolt caster clip tau. And there's something else over here. And we've completed a game milestone. Okay, um, let's go into our inventory and teleport. I'm going to keep the carbon. Everything else we're going to transfer to the ship. So handily, you can always teleport items 
back to your ship's uh, storage, like cargo hold. Gonna get some more carbon here. Okay, I've actually forgotten what the quest was. Uh, it's to get iron, wasn't it? We need to get iron. Yeah, don't mind me. I'm not doing anything. Okay, so now to craft things, we go back into our inventory, we select an empty slot and we craft product. So we want three karite sheets. So there's one. There's two. And there's three. And that's actually the iron that we had stored in the ship. So we're gonna. Uh, you can see our uh, suit's running out of a bit to protect us from the toxic atmosphere. So we're gonna go back to the ship, and we're gonna hop inside. Get ourselves a bit of shelter. And we're going to go into the ship's inventory, to the launch thruster, and we're going to repair it. And the next thing we want to do is repair the pulse engine. For which we're going to need to find some heridium and we're going to need two more karite sheets. I think I should be able to get. Now, is that heridium? I can't tell from it. Life power. No. Let's go and have a look, shall we? Ow. And there is full damage in the game. Oh, it's uh, copper. So this is the kind of thing that can happen. We've got massive bulbs of copper just hanging off the side of this. Um, I think that's Heridium up there, actually. These, uh, like, silicate, silicate monoliths. What have we detected? There's a oh, there's a iridium deposit over there. Or we could just go and mine this. So I have my jetpack with me, which I can use to get up these uh, very steep slopes. Yeah, this is Iridium. Ow, god damn it.
Okay, so there's our mining charge defeated, but we can go into the back menu and into the multi tool and recharge it with all of this carbon we've been getting. So you can use any of the red lightning bolt elements to recharge it. Uh, it seems to be best to use carbon because the other two isotopes that I've found, the plutonium and the thormium or something, the one that begins with T, are also used as spaceship fuel whereas carbon isn't. So that seems to be the best bet for recharging the mining laser. I think we've probably got enough by now, but I'm just going to get all that I can. So we've got all the Heridium we need. Let's get a bit extra, just for luck. And let's see if we can find ourselves a little bit more iron. This over there. So tap the right stick to print. And you see there is a kind of stamina meter there. Oh, this is uh, zinc, but there's iron rocks around. It seems to work on a, like a similar principle to like the mining in Seven Days to Die, where you get a little bit of stuff as you're digging the rock out, and then when you completely destroy it, you get a big bonus. What do you want? Hey? Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Jog on, mate. God. Okay, uh, we should grab this and then head back to the ship. Um, sure, let's grab some carbon as well. It seems to be like these sentinels have just come up and stare at you. And you can't harvest things while they're watching. Um, okay, let's go back to the ship now.
Okay, so pulse engine's critically damaged. And we should be able to make the carite sheets. go and I think the next quest is yeah refuel the launch thrusters uh, which we may be able to do already let's have a look oh. achievement unlocked there we go Before we go any further, I'm actually going to, I forgot to interact with this. This is what starts off what I think is the main quest line. So, reality seems to fold in on itself. One moment, I can see debris. In another, a vast red orb, almost too large and too bright to behold. It knows me, inside and out, more than I ever could myself. Could this be the face of creation itself, or in my hazy, freshly awakened state, am I being manipulated? A name burns itself into my mind, Atlas, and a request made without words that I should follow the path this being, this Atlas, has set for me. So we can choose, I'm guessing, to either do a main quest playthrough or just do a free explore playthrough. I'm guessing that's what these two options amount to. Uh, let's go for accepting the Atlas's guidance. I feel suffused with the warm glow of approval. I was lost, but now am found. The Atlas acknowledges my allegiance, and I am certain it will manifest itself again soon. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we've started on the main quest. Let's hop back in here. I'm doing this mostly so the uh, life support doesn't run down, because you can actually refuel the thrusters from... You see, this is the same menu. I can get exoship, starship, and multi-tool. So I can like refuel the thrusters and all that sort of stuff. Uh, just when I'm out and about on away missions. So we need to charge this with some plutonium. I'd like to get a bit more in there. That's only 57%. And I don't think we've got very much here at all. Okay, so we've done a bit of refueling. So our next goal is to leave planet. Um, so I guess let's do that. We can always come back here and have a proper explore before we leave the system like. So it's right trigger to take off. There we go. Spaceship in the air. And hold right trigger to accelerate. Fly up around and into the atmosphere and out of the atmosphere. Let's go and what it looks like in space. So accelerating. Or B to engage boost. I'm boosting. And we're in space. The Zinakamsky Kesip system in the Euclid Galaxy. We are. So, if you take a look around me, each one of those points of light there is supposedly a star in the game that we can actually visit and like interact with. 
and just like generally mess around with. And that's where, like initially to me, this game seems to have the edge over Elite Dangerous, because none of this stuff is just furniture. Although Elite had a lot of stuff in it, a lot of it was just blobs on your radar that you couldn't do anything with. Whereas for this game, I mean there are like deco plants on the planet obviously and you can't mine as such. You can just like break resource nodes essentially. But every planet has, like every planet is interactable, every asteroid is explodable. Um, So we can press L. There's a space station over there. There's an undiscovered planet over there that we could go and visit as well. There's something for to rotate. So that's, that's Eki's Landing right below us where we came from. There's another planet over there, uh, which is the, a moon of Eki's Landing. There's that over there. And all this is undiscovered land like undiscovered space that we can go and explore and find upgrades and things to do and like resources and it's just this game seems like potentially infinite in terms of just the amount of playability of it um, and this is where I got to last time so I'm, I think I'm going to leave it here for now um, this is going to be I think a recurring let's play on this channel it's not going to replace Planet Explorers or Empyreon I'm still going to be doing the let's plays of those but this game just seems, I mean, at least potentially, although I haven't got very far into it, it just seems so, so cool um, and just so limitless in terms of what might happen. So, uh, yeah, anyway, guys, this was episode one of Let's Play No Man's Sky on the PC. I've been Eki Thump. Like and subscribe if you've uh, enjoyed this episode and you'd like to see more gameplay of this potentially amazing game. And I will see you next time.